Hey guys, hope you're having a good day. So today we're gonna jump in and try to fix this Weed Eater Featherlight FL 1500LE blower. But first wanted to mention that this was actually part of a three blower bundle handed me from a neighbor. Here are the other two. And you can tell first off, they're all in the same super dirty condition. So backstory on these is that one of their family members used to do yard maintenance back in the day, and these were put in storage for whatever reason and they wanted to see if I can get them running again for them. So side note is these might actually be the worst condition pieces I've worked on to date. I'd say it looks more like they were pulled out of a swamp than a storage shed, but my plan is to try to get them all running, likely in separate videos if I have time to film them, and we're gonna start on this weed eater first. So let me get you guys set up and we'll get started. All right, well, looking at this thing closer up, the line, it looks like it's starting to break and this one's already disconnected. So I don't have much faith in putting uh, fuel into the tank and trying to start it there. Although the tank does look pretty decent. There's a little dirt in there, but not bad. So we're going to try taking this uh, intake off first and putting some fuel mix directly through the carb to see if we can't get it to pop off first. And that air filter is actually in good shape. I might have flooded it. Let's give it a second. All right, well, I don't know how well that came through on camera, but it did run for a couple seconds. So that's good enough for me to keep moving. So I usually don't like to clean these things off until I actually have a, a running machine, but in this instance, it's going to help us out a great deal as far as cleaning the carb and getting the lines in if we rinse this off quick before moving it inside. So that's what I'm going to do, and we'll keep moving. All right, we're inside after rinsing it off and letting it dry in the sun for a little bit. Just wanted it completely dry so we didn't get water where uh, it shouldn't be, and we're ready to get into the carb and do the lines in the tank. And uh, I'm not sure how well it actually showed up on camera how dirty this thing was but this is kind of a night, almost a night and day difference, even though it's still dirty. Um, this one's, all three of them are, are really a lot dirtier than a lot of the pieces of equipment that I see. But let's get into this, uh, taking this carb off. And this is a T25. Looks like there's two screws same size and this is actually a it looks like a 2007 at least that's what the sticker says a pool and design blower so we're probably 15 20 years old at the time of filming this one okay looks like we got his original zama carb c1u W12B, if you can see that. Okay, let's scoot this thing out of the way and open that guy up. We probably need a purge bulb at minimum, because that one's pretty old. It's still pliable though, surprisingly. That was loose. So we got dirt in the screen there, and 
flaps aren't the best. Let's check the metering side. Not super brittle, but it's stiff. Yeah, it's crunchy. Okay. So I'm gonna have to look up that C1U W12B on Zama's website and figure out what kit it needs. Maybe I already have it. Or maybe we can get away with just replacing this. So yeah, I'll bring you back when I look that up and uh, we'll keep moving on this thing. So after some quick Googling, um, the Zama kit that we need, the rebuild kit is RB47. Or the gasket diaphragm kit was GND18. Um, I actually had this kicking around, so we're just going to use this. This is the full rebuild kit and actually has a, a primer bulb in it. This is an aftermarket one. It's not OEM Zama. I like using the OEM ones, but... Like I said, I just had this around probably from a bulk buy from Amazon or something. So we're going to use that. Um, but first, we've got to clean this carb out. So I'm going to take this outside and spray it. And at the same time, I'm going to clean that tank out. But first, I'm going to take it off so it's a little bit easier to do that. And it's just these three screws here. And we'll need to look at which lines have the filter on it and which one is the return. Looks like, I don't know if you can see that, this one is the return since there's no filter on it and the larger one in the bottom hole has the filter on it. So to clean these out, I usually just put some old straight gas in it, swish it around and dump it back out until it's clean. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to be staining in there, but at least the dirt will be out and we'll get this thing cleaned up and, and ready to go. So I'll bring you back when that's Ready. Okay, back from spraying everything out and everything came out pretty clean. Got all the gaskets off the carb, got all that cleaned up. The screen is clear. We didn't, that wasn't clogged or anything with all the dirt in there. And the, uh, the tank came out pretty good. So as far as the lines go, this is what came out of it. And then I found some equivalent lines in my stash of lines that we're gonna use. And then as far as a filter goes, this is what came out of it, and it looks pretty trashy. And with all the, the dirt that was actually in the screen in the carb, it'll be worth it just to replace it. Um, and I got a, a new one here. I've had instances in the past where you reuse a filter, and then the, the carb won't purge, and it's because the filter's clogged, and you think there's a, a carb problem, or you rebuilt something wrong, and it's actually the filter. So when in doubt, just replace it. So we're going to get these lines fed in these holes, uh, get the filter put on, and get this mounted back to the blower. Okay, so we got that in there. Gave me a little bit of trouble, but it's laying on the bottom of the tank here. You kind of see a shadow. So that's exactly where you want it. And we got to do the skinny line for the return. 
we're just going to push that to maybe about an inch underneath the surface of the inside surface of the tank there. So you should be able to see that maybe, maybe not. There it is. So I'm going to leave these long so that I don't waste line trimming this and then trimming it again. So we'll just get the first cut at the right length. Get this back on there and move on to the carb. Okay, it's carb assembly time. So before we go throwing this thing back together, a couple things to, to, to touch base on is you want to make sure that your rocker arm is adjusted correctly. You can get one of these tools from Zama. If I can remember the part number, I'll put it up on the screen for you guys. But C1U, you use this edge and make sure that your rocker arm is pretty much just touching it, but not touching it. So we're good there. And you want to double check your kit parts, make sure that they all match. In our case, we're all good to go there. On the pumping side, you want this flap diaphragm actually touching the machine surface. But on the metering side, you want the gasket first and then the diaphragm. So it's kind of opposite on either end, but we're gonna get this thing put back together and uh, get it back on the machine. Okay, quick test to see if we can hear the uh, the purge working. And we don't. So we must have a check valve problem in this block here. So I'll have to take it back apart. And solve that. All right, well, I got it now. I just had to lubricate that check valve. I guess it was dry from sitting. So you can hear it working now and everything back together. So let's bring that blower over here and we'll get this thing put on. All right, so we got our excess length and line here. We got our carb and I think it went on this way. There we go. All right, so now we can cut our lines to length. And this bigger one was the filter line, so cut that there. Put that on the bottom. turn line somewhere about there all right I think we're ready to put some gas in this thing and test it See if it'll run by itself. Okay, folks, here we go. So this one actually takes the splined 
adjustment tool. So I got that out here in case I need it. And uh, we'll see if this thing's gonna purge some fuel. We got some fresh 40 to one in here. Yep, we're purging good. Okay, let's give this a shot. Open up the high a little bit. Is that a quarter turn, half turn? Just resetting the screw there to one and a half turns out. All right, let's see where the low's at. That was about one and a half, too. Guess we should check the plug and compression. Probably should have done that first, huh? Well, that was completely loose. <laughs> that might've been a problem. It's wet. Might as well check compression anyway, we're here. Starting at zero. Uh oh. Yeah, I think we would want something around the 120 mark. I'd have to look at the specs, but with that plug being loose, that might have been the issue too. So let's make sure that's tight. And we'll try it again. If not, this might be burnt up. Try this one more time. Forgot to reset that tweak I made. One, two, Three. So one and a half turns out.
not start. Okay, well, it's story time. I spent enough time off camera trying to fool myself that the issue isn't anything other than that 70 PSI nail in the coffin compression reading. But I think that's the problem, and I think that's the reason it was put in storage since that plug looked almost brand new when I pulled it um, originally. So my guess is uh, they couldn't get it running. They swapped the plug as an easy try. Um, this is actually the wrong plug. It's an auto light. should be a champion. Um, but they, they gave up. They bought a new blower uh, to be able to keep doing their yards. So I really hope we don't have a similar situation with those other two blowers, but I'll take this as a lesson to, to check compression first moving forward on this type of stuff. What gets me on this is that it ran by itself, both at the beginning of the video and then again on the first pull when I got it back together. I double checked spark again. Uh, I could tell we're getting fuel since the plug was wet when I pulled the plug. From there, I went through the carb again to make sure it was put together right. Tried again with a bunch of different uh, carb needle settings and then even pulled it over with the carb completely uh, removed to make sure it wasn't getting flooded out. And still nothing. So like you saw, it acts like it wants to go when I'm pulling the rope and it just doesn't take off and stay running enough for me to get the carb adjustment uh, screwdriver on there to keep it running. But the only other thing I could think to check is a clog uh, exhaust or spark arrestor screen that uh, we'd have to disassemble this uh, to get to, but I doubt that'll cause the uh, low compression. But while I had the carb off, I did uh, peek at the ring through the intake and I can't tell if it's free or not. Um, there did look to be a bunch of carbon buildup on both sides of the ring. So there may still be hope that it's just a stuck ring and we might be able to, to, to get it free, reassemble and try again. It could be a scored cylinder too that I couldn't really fully see from the openings, but we're at the point where I'm going to start taking this thing apart because it's not starting. Okay, digging into this thing, uh, I know we got to get the carb off again, the plug out. There's four screws here that look like they need to come out and then one on the front. I'm not sure if we have to take the handle off yet, but I think that's just isolated uh, with rubber attached to this green piece here. Yeah, so this one was an Autolite 255. I think the right one is a Champion RJCY or RJ6YC or something like that. Okay. Let's get this front one off first. I think there's four here because that's the uh, one side of the crankcase. We'll see in a second. Let's see, can we lift, lift this off? Yeah. So yeah, this was the other side of the crankcase. You can see an O-ring that would have sealed against the block here. And there is fuel mix in there. to show you guys. Let's move the piston up. Yeah. Okay. Spark arrestor screen. Need to get a Phillips head.
looks like it slides apart. Yeah, so that's clean. It's too loose. I gotta find a bigger T25. Probably T30. To invest in some T handles, I think. Let's see if the exhaust port's clogged up. Like I said, I still don't think that's a that would cause a compression problem, but who knows. wet in there but it's not clogged it looks like okay. what do we need to do for this cylinder it's like a socket head cap here looks like two of them so i'll have to see if my allen keys will reach that okay so that's a Four and a half, I bet you it's a US. Yeah, that one fits good. That is a 3 16 okay. Hoping these don't snap off here. loose. Let's loosen up that other one first. There we go. I can't turn that. I can't turn that by hand yet. Okay, jug is loose. There goes one of the bolts, I can't lose that. You guys want to see the, the bore? It's got some wear. I think this should just lift off. Yep. All right. So we got needle bearings, looks like, for a uh, connecting rod bearing. A lot of carbon on that. Yeah, the ring's stuck. I don't know if you can tell. There's carbon on both sides and it's stuck in there. So how do we clean that out? <clears throat> Do I scrape it? I wonder if oven cleaner would work, kind of like uh, how you clean a cast iron pan. Let me try a couple things and I'll bring you back when uh, I get this free. All right, folks. Well, a few hours later, we're on the positive side of this thing. Finally got this ring freed up. You can tell how much carbon's coming out from behind the the ring and the ring groove. So that's probably what was holding it up there. But this took two hours in the ultrasonic and then two hours in like a carb chem dip, just soaking to finally free this thing up. So I need to spend some time and pry this thing out without breaking it. And uh, I'll bring you back once we're all cleaned up and ready to put this thing back in. All right, not good news. So I was going around as careful as I could, 
prying it out from one side to the other and part of it must have still been stuck in the, the ring groove or it was already broken from being stuck previous to us messing with it. But that's kind of the nail in the coffin on this one. You can kind of see all the, the carbon buildup on that, the one side of the ring. This is this was the top side. And then that ring groove is completely packed. Uh, let me get a flashlight. Yeah, and that ring groove is completely packed. So. Okay, so out of my own curiosity, I had to take a look and see if this thing was even still available online since this is like 20 years old. And surprisingly, it is. So there was one or two sellers on eBay um, that still had this. It was like 10 or 12 bucks and figured what the heck let's just get it um kind of a gamble since we don't know the condition of the crank seal here and there was that wear on the bore but yeah i'll take the gamble since i kind of broke this thing anyway so we'll get that on order and in the meantime we'll scrape out this ring groove get it back in the dip to dissolve whatever else is in there that i can't scrape out and we'll wait for that part. All right, and I think that's ready for the dip. Quite a difference. Okay, we got our piston ring in. I'll have to give you guys that uh, part number on the screen here. I don't remember off the top of my head, but it looks to be the right diameter. There's no way for me to actually verify that because it came to me Fold it up in a piece of paper. So I think we're good there though. And here's the the piston all cleaned up. And it's a little oily because I actually dipped it in two cycle mix and let it sit there for a little bit um, to kind of work into all the moving parts since I used that chem dip and carb spray on it. So as far as torques go, I have no idea. Um, these are just blind threaded holes into aluminum. They use socketed cap screws. And that kind of information is not available online. So I'm going to try to tighten it down the best I can without stripping it out. And as I go, I'm probably going to be adding some two cycle mix to some critical parts, uh, like the inside of the, the jug here and the, and the crank, just so that initial startup, we're not completely dry. So yeah, we're going to get this piston ring put on here. And we'll go from there. And it would really suck if I broke this, putting it on. Come on. Yeah. There we go. I think I'm going to try to get the piston put in the jug first and then put the assembly in because <clears throat> the piston needs to be in this orientation and the kind of locator for the ring is on the opposite side where I can't see. So I think we're going to try to get this put in. So this is the intake. And you can kind of see where the ring groove was. See that vertical right, it'd be like right here in between these two ports. That's where that original ring groove was. So I'm gonna just line that up like this and try to fit that ring in by hand. I don't have the right tools for this, unfortunately. And this is just some two cycle oil to help me out. got it yep so our o-ring's in good shape here 
And I think we should be able to just drop this on the crank. Slide it in. Oh, I forgot one thing. So this jug bolt actually has to be put in first. Where's my Allen key? Because the hole's only big enough for that Allen key. So I hold that in place. Get the connecting rod on there. Slide that in. Start screwing it down. other bolt in. Okay. I'm afraid to go anymore. So it is what it is. Exhaust. Squeeze the end on like that. Where's the thing? Okay, quick check, I got everything ready to put the cover on. free. Let's put some uh, two cycle mix in there, pull it around some more. Compression test. Okay. okay. Shooting for anything north of 90. 100, 110, 120 would be great. around try again for you guys bear to handle. That's actually like 130. Awesome. Spark plug. Take air intake and the blower tube. All right, you guys think it's going to run? All right, cross your fingers. 
let's purge this thing. See if it'll start for us. Yeah, and it's probably gonna be super smoky with all the uh, two cycle oil I used as a assembly lube pretty much. So. Well, with that, I think we're going to end this one here. We got it running again, and we kind of got schooled by the low compression at the very beginning, but it was kind of acting like it wasn't an issue with it starting up and running like it was. And uh, we unfortunately got through the whole repair and found that at the very end. So figured, hey, just keep going. So yeah, I'll probably run this personally two or three times in my yard after mowing just to make sure it's okay before probably just giving it to somebody that needs it. Um, I'm not sure what carboned up that ring. Maybe the, the wrong fuel mixture, like heavy on oil, but maybe it has a million hours on it. I don't know. But yeah, hopefully uh, what we covered here helps somebody out. Thanks for joining me on this one, and I'll catch you on the next one.